It's Professor Dave. Let's check out some spaces. He knows a lot about all kinds of stuff. Professor Dave explains. We've talked a lot about vectors and matrices lately, as well as how certain mathematical operations, like addition and scalar multiplication, work on them. Now we want to generalize these operations to define what is known as a vector space, which is sometimes also called a linear space. So let's look at this concept now. Before defining anything, let's just introduce some notation. Let's call our vector space V. If some vector is a member or element of V, we can denote it with this symbol here. So the following means that A is an element of V. All elements of the vector space have the same properties we already discussed for vectors. So elements must abide by the commutative and associative properties of addition, as is shown here. There also exists a zero vector in the vector space such that any element plus the zero vector will just give back the element. For each element A, there exists another element, negative A, within V, such that the addition of the two gives the zero vector. Scalars can be distributed across the addition of two members of V, just as an element can be distributed across the addition of two scalars. The product of two scalars multiplied by an element is the same as one of the scalars times the product of the other scalar and the element. And finally, multiplying by the scalar 1 just gives back that element. So these are simply properties that elements of the vector space must possess. And in this way, we can regard a vector space as a collection of elements that can be added together in any combination and multiplied by scalars in any combination. Now, an important property of a vector space is something called closure. Closure requires two properties. First, for an element A of V, multiplying A by any scalar will give a result that is also within V. Second, for any two elements A and B within V, adding the two elements will also give a result that is contained within V. These closure properties are what determine if V is a vector space. Let's take some time to examine these properties. At this point, it will be useful to introduce this R symbol, which represents the set of all real numbers, meaning positive, negative, rational, irrational, all the real numbers we talked about when we discussed the types of numbers in a previous tutorial. We can pick any element of this set, a real number, and multiply it by any scalar we want. Let's take the number 5 as our element and multiply it by a few scalars. 2 times 5 is 10. 8 thirds times 5 is 40 thirds. 1 ninth times 5 is 5 ninths. Pi times 5 is 5 pi, and so on. Notice that all of our results are still real numbers. This is because no matter what we choose, a real number times a real number is still real. So the set of real numbers satisfies the first closure property. Now for the second property, we will need to choose two elements to add together. We could choose 74 and negative 10, adding them together to get 64. Adding 2 and 4 fifths gives us 14 fifths. No matter what two real numbers we choose, the sum of two real numbers is still real. So because the two criteria have been met, the set of real numbers is closed and can be considered a vector space. Moving to another example, let's expand on our notation. If R is the set of real numbers, Rn is the set of real vectors with a length of some integer n. Similarly, R m by n is the set of real m by n matrices. First, let's just look at R3 vectors. We can multiply any such vector by any scalar and find that our result is a vector of length 3, made of real numbers. Similarly, we can add any two elements and find the same to be true, given that each component is simply now a sum that will result in another real number. 
This set is closed and is thus also a vector space. Given what we know about matrix addition, if some set is comprised of matrices with the same dimensions, multiplying by some scalar or adding any two matrices together will not change their dimensions, which makes this too a vector space. So it would seem that vector spaces can actually be made of more than just vectors. In fact, we could define a vector space that was made up of functions if we wanted to. For example, let's take the set of linear polynomials in the form of ax plus b. If we multiply by a scalar c, we can distribute to get ca times x plus bc. Since we are dealing with real numbers, ca and bc will also be real, and the form of our equation is still a linear polynomial, so our result is still within the set. Similarly, if we have two different equations, a1 times x plus b1 and a2 times x plus b2, and we add them, once we group like terms, we get the quantity a1 plus a2 times x plus the quantity b1 plus b2. Once again, all of these are real numbers, and we get another linear polynomial that is contained in our set. With these two closure properties satisfied, we therefore have a vector space made of functions. We've listed a lot of examples of vector spaces now, so what does it look like when the closure properties are not satisfied? Take for example a simple set made of vectors of length 2. However, all the elements of this set have a value of 2 in the second row. Let's take two elements of this set, a and b, and try adding them together. We don't even need to assign values for the entries in the first row to see what will happen. The first row will be the sum of a1 and b1, while the second row will be 2 plus 2, which is 4. Our starting set only contained elements with the value 2 in the second row, but when we added two vectors of this set, we got a 4 in the second row, which means the sum is not a member of the set. Thus, the set is not closed and is not a vector space, despite the fact that it is made of vectors. A lot of the topics we introduce in the coming tutorials will involve working with vector spaces, so let's check comprehension. Thanks for watching guys. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.